Daniel chapter 8. Finally, after, out of 7. And we could do more in 7, but I don't want to exhaust it. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar. Now this shows you again, the, the chapters are not in order because Belshazzar has been dead since the end of chapter 5. So when the queen comes to Belsizer, there's a man in the kingdom who has the interpretation of dreams and visions. Here they are. His own interpretation, well, his own visions, his own dream, the dreams and visions of Nebuchadnezzar. And maybe others because Joseph interpreted dreams of the baker and uh, uh, the butler. And we've seen with Joseph and we've seen with, with Daniel that the, the, the scholars and the scientists and the, the Ouija board is and the horoscopists and the, the, the newspaper columns don't know what they're doing or what they're saying when it comes to the realm of God and just they don't know what they're talking about anyway. A vision appeared unto me, Daniel, even unto me, Daniel. After that, which appeared unto me at the first. And we already talked about the first vision. I saw in the vision, and it came to pass when I saw that I was at Shishan in the palace, which is in the province of Elam. I saw in a vision, I was by the river Ulelai. So he's not in bed. He's by the riverside. He's outside. Now whether he's fallen asleep or he's wide awake. And then I lifted up my eyes and saw. At the river. So there he is standing, sitting, whatever he's doing. And he sees where he's at. Behold, there stood before the river. A ram with two horns. Now we're going to read it. The, the, the vision is interpreted in later on. Hopefully, Lord willing, tomorrow night. But this would be Dyrus and Cyrus, the Medes and the Persians. Remember, horns are power. Horns are kings. Horns are kingdoms. And the two horns were high. But one was higher than the other. And the higher came up last. So, in at the end of chapter 5, Dyrus comes in and conquers Babylon. Who comes after him is, is Cyrus. Cyrus is the highest one. We are looking at history for us in prophecy for Daniel about kingdoms. And the world today's great error is they're rewriting history. God doesn't rewrite. They're rewriting the Bibles. They got tired of rewriting the Bibles, so let's, now let's do history. And soon the rewritten history as the rewritten Bibles will be in the pulpits of the church. I mean the rewritten Bibles are in the pulpits of the churches in today. I saw the ram pushing westward, northward, southward, but no eastward. East would be the Persians. Where they are. Well, they're not going to have a civil war. And no beast. And we know what the beasts are now. They're, they're countries. They're, they're kingdoms. They're kings. Chapter 7. Might stand before him. The ram. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand. He's already conquered Babylon. Power and mightiful nation. 
but he did according to his will. It was in his power and his authority and became great. And as I was considering, behold, a he goat, not an it goat. I mean, they're going to change the Bibles, but these people don't know what six sexes they are. It's a he goat, male. This he goat will be Alexander the Great. Now, what's remarkable in, in the Bible is Alexander the Great. Now we see the Medes and the Persians, and we see Cyrus and Darius. You will see the layout of Alexander the Great, but you will not see his name in the scriptures. Alexander the Great died of alcoholism. came from the West on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground. He's flying across the ground. He wasn't in an airplane. He was on horse. And the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. Power, strength, kingdom. How is it notable? Listen, everybody in school, everybody in college studies Alexander the Great. You don't really look at the, the Cyrus and, the, and, and Darius. If you looked at them, you would have to look at the Bible. And when you go through the Egyptian history and the pharaohs and all that in your public school, there's a couple pharaohs you leave out. Because you don't want to get into the Bible. All the times I've studied pharaohs in Egypt in school, I didn't hear about a man named Moses. I didn't hear about the children of Israel being in slave camps, being served with rigor. Oh, but I hear about the, the, the slaves in America and how roughly and unjustly they were treated. Yeah, by a few. Not by all. Notable horn, mostly everybody knows about Alexander the Great. And he came to the ram, which had two horns. So a nation of two, Medes and Persians, here comes Alexander the Great, one horn. One horn, I want people to consider him to be a unicorn. Who says they have to be a horse? You know, you're reading to New Age policy. Uh, there are goats and, and, and rams and all that. They have a one horn. I don't know what it is. I'm not going to state I know what a unicorn is. Which I've seen standing before the river. So here's that same ram. Now comes the goat. And he came to the ram that had the two horns, which I've seen standing before the river, and ran into him in the fury of his power, a battle. And I saw him come close to the ram and was moved with collar. And that's Heated anger, destruction, plague. There's a disease called cholera with, with it's known for heat, hotness, rashness. This is an extreme anger. I wonder what the modern Bibles do for that. You can look up this word in the Webster's Dictionary, 1828 Dictionary. Do well, I did. You can also look up this word in the medical dictionary and say, wow, well, that's against him. 
and smote the ram. Isn't it funny that we have an automobile maker that's called Dodge Ram? Where do you get the Dodge and where do you get the Ram? Oh, yeah, Dodge was the guy's last name. Okay, where do you get the Ram? Well, we got to pick an animal. Yeah, you also got to come out of the King James 1611 Bible. Why do you think like that? Well, you don't. That's what my job is. And break the two horns. Cyrus and Dyer. Look in history. Here it is. Now remember, for us, it's history. For Daniel, it hasn't happened yet. So what we're reading about, what is our history, is the revelation and the ending of the prophecy of Daniel that hasn't happened yet. And there was... Now, do you see why the Jews put Daniel off somewhere else? Because you see his prophecies are all about the Gentiles, the dogs. Have we seen any prophecy about the nation of Israel? Very little. And when we do see Israel, we'll see Israel on two parts. The Antichrist and Jesus Christ. But what leads to the Antichrist and Jesus Christ, what leads to the tribulation period and to the second advent and the millennium of Jesus Christ is the Gentile nation. But we want to elevate America, but we got to realize there was a nation called the Media and the Persian. They're gone. There was a nation called Babylon. It's gone. Greece with Alexander, it's gone. Roman Empire, it's here and now. America, it'll be gone. England, it's on its way out. Russia, oh, Russia, we're in terror of Russia. Oh, the war of Russia, they'll, he'll be gone too. And I'll tell you, the Russians, the English, and the Americans have somehow, some way, cursed that Jew. God said, I will curse you. He break the two horns and there was no power in the ram to stand before him. But he cast him down to the ground and stamped on it. You, you, you see almost the Antichrist? Remember we read about that beast? That beast that we don't even know what it looked like. Stamping and devouring. What you do is go and study this part in history of Alexander the Great conquering the Medes and the Persians, and you're going to see a type of Antichrist devouring the world that we studied last night. I'm not saying Alexander is the Antichrist, but there are types of history of people who are. And their actions. Adolf Hitler is a type of Antichrist, but... Adolf Hitler and killing and, and all the, 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 the disgusting things he done to the Jews. Adolf Hitler is a little pussycat kitten compared to what the Antichrist is going to do to the Jews. Your mass that we proclaim that Jesus, you know, he's in the biscuit and he's in the wine. The Bible says in Revelation 12 that that, that Satan that dragon, the Antichrist, they're going to drink real Jewish blood and eat real Jewish flesh of the Jews in the tribulation period. They're going to chop their heads off. The Bible says for the word of God. Enus hocus pocus, any up my anus hocus pocus. Does everybody eat a Jew? Come on up. And on Ash Wednesday, go to your local Baptist church. To where, you know, the Baptists are gone from some, wherever they went. UFOs, flying angels, and all that. They, they're gone. You go to their buildings, and you can get your mark on your forehead. And you don't really want to be open about that mark on your forehead. You can go down to the, to the Jehovah Witness Hall. They'll be still there, and you can get it on your right hand. People don't like it when I say stuff like that. Your church building ain't going to be raptured. 
your church building will be a building used by the Antichrist. Keep fixing it up. Keep making it look great. But the Antichrist will thank you. So. Cast down the ground, stamped on him, and there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. That's the type of Antichrist. You know, there's going to be none that can deliver those Jews out of the Antichrist but God himself. God, Jesus Christ said one time, and I'm not quoting it verbatim, but, you know, except the times we, we, we shorten, and God's going to shorten them, even the elect wouldn't survive. Don't realize, and I'm glad I'm not going to be there, but you don't, we don't realize the power of the Antichrist and what he's going to, I mean, you think gasoline is the main thing, and Daytona Beach are saying, you know, oh, for the last four days, Gas prices have been going down because they raised the prices during bike week. They raised the prices for the Daytona 500. So all the idiots that come down here, you're going to make us pay more gas. Stay home. I don't like my gas being raised because you, listen, they did it back in Connecticut when it's the season for, for all the tourists and the terrorists to come and enjoy the seaside, enjoy the, 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 the mystic Connecticut, and enjoy the, they raise all the gas prices for all the tourists. Stay home. I don't get gas when, when, when it's bike week. I don't get gas when it's now. I get it before and I get it after. Gas prices go. Oh, gas prices are going home because because the motorcycles went home. You think that's a problem? You wait to the Antichrist. I, I seen a movie that that was like four parts to it. And, you know, we're, we're going to imitate. We're going to uh, deceive the beast. We're we're going to come up with our own computer code against the Antichrist. Oh no, you're not. Oh no, you're not. The Bible says. You cannot buy, you cannot sell, unless you receive that mark. The Antichrist is going to destroy nations. Never mind God. The Antichrist is going to destroy nations. And there will be nations that will help that Jew, and they're going to be under persecution, they're going to be under death, they're going to be under the wrath of Satan. They're helping Jews. And those that help the Jews, those that bless the Jews, Jesus is going to say, come on in to the millennium. And all those that sided with Satan, all those that hated the Jews, none that helped the Jew, depart from me into the lake of fire. Therefore did he go wax very great. And when he was strong, pride, alcohol, the great horn was broken. He died. And, and for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. Now I'll bring this up tomorrow, Lord willing, if I remember. But these four horns are the four generals of Alexander the Great by chance. that took When Alexander died, his kingdom was given to his four generals. Syria, Egypt. I can't think of the other two. I mean, I got it written down here. I don't know how the Lord willing if I remember. I have to bring that. But his four generals. Daniel didn't know that. Daniel didn't know anything about the end of the Medes and the Persians. Never mind this guy Alexander coming up in the Greek. And then he died, and in his death, four of his generals, according to the scriptures. Toward the four winds of heaven, north, east, west, and south. And when you when we look at the, where they come from, I don't have it on this page. I got where I'm going to, you know, put it in my Bible. Look at Look at the prophecy fulfilled in our history. And if, if they do, I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know how they're going to do it. I don't care. But let's say they change Alexander. Let's say they didn't like his four captives because maybe he had slave owners. I don't know. 
So we're going to erase people in history that we don't like. We're going to erase people and places and events that matches with the Bible. So there'll be a day, maybe, when you come across, you're like, I don't know who these four Noah Warrens are. Let me check the history book. Oh, there's not. We are reading prophecy, and as we're reading it today, it is history. It is prophecy fulfilled. And now, if that doesn't get you going, that doesn't get you excited. It sure did not get you, uh, Hort excited. He didn't believe in Bible miracles and prophecy. You are the father of your modern Bible. And we're not going to look it up. I can just imagine... Do modern Bibles change what we're reading? Have you found anywhere, maybe except the word collar, look it up 1828 dictionary, but have you found anything that you need to clear? Has anything been what we read so far? Oh man, ancient archaic words. And yet with a little studying, and a little reading, as Paul told Timothy, we can look at the scriptures and say, there it is. Our God has already seen the end of the earth. And he writes backwards. And if God can tell Daniel, I, I, one thing I don't like about my Bible right now is it don't have the dates. And there was a date back here. I, I, mean, over here. I had the date of Daniel between 607 and 534 B.C. Now, I don't know when the kingdom, I don't have that date here. But there's been quite a few years of, Neb of Nebuchadnezzar. Um, Alexander the Great, but here it's fulfilled. I, 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 I'm stunned by it. At the power of our, not Daniel, of our God. God told Pharaoh, here are seven cows. And these seven cows are nice and fat plus and they're they got plenty of meat and they got plenty of milk. And then seven cows come up and eat the seven good cows and they don't even look like they even had a dinner. And God revealed that to Pharaoh by Joseph to say, There are seven years of plenty, and there are seven years of fierce famine. And that I even doubled the dream to how serious it is to corn. That my God knows tomorrow. I got one prayer request right now of all press, prayer requests. I want, I, and God knows <laughs> if he answers his prayer, he knows in the day and the time he's going to fulfill that. And I'm like, come on, Lord. That, I, I'm 50 years old. I'm over 50 years old. To me, I'm old and ready to go. And I get people 70 years old saying I'm a youngster. God knows when I'm going to die or rapture. God has all my life ahead of him. I don't even know what tomorrow holds. Look at Belsizer. Good night, Daniel. Enjoy the chain. Uh, yeah, all right. Good night, buddy. And overnight, Belshazzar wakes up in hell, has been in hell ever since. There are people who have gone to bed and said, I've got a doctor's appointment tomorrow, or oh, I've got to go to the store and get some eggs for that recipe I'm going to make. Oh, uh, man, i got to go over her house. I don't want to go over her house, but we got to go over her house and, you know, how do you do, and no boo do boo and everything like that. i got to take the car to the, oh, whatever, I got, and they go to bed, and they never finish their to-do list. There are many to-do lists that are never finished by morning and early light, and we have a God that knows what's going to happen in the morning. And because Daniel will die, he does, because I will die, and I will, and because Christians die, and they do, because the unsaved die, and they do, that doesn't stop God. Alexander the Great dies. That didn't stop the prophecy. And out of one of them, here we go, verse 9, 
Now, you guys, how many years we're, we're jumping now? We're going to the four generals of the Grecian Greek history. Now, watch this jump. We're going to jump over England. I'm trying to think of the name now. The Griffin. We're going to jump over the Bear. We're going to jump over the Leopard. And we're going to make our way back to that fourth beast right now. What about America? God says, All right, Alexander Great, your four generals. Now we go to a little horn. That little horn is the Antichrist. You know how many years have between 8 8 and 8 9? That period after of heaven. That's a quite a few long time. And she conceived. And she gave birth. Uh, uh, you don't conceive and give birth right away. Every woman would love to have that happen, but you got nine months. You got trimesters. You got morning sicknesses. You got a big belly. I overcame a little horn which waxed exceedingly great toward the south, toward the east, and towards the pleasant land. That would probably be Israel. No north. Because he's coming from the north. Remember that other sense of directions we got? We, we were missing the direction. And that's where Persia was. It waxed great. That means it got greater and bigger. Even to the host of heaven, the stars. But if you got the modern Bibles and these idiot scholars, uh, that's the children of Seth or whatever, whoever, I don't know. I don't care. It's a lie. And cast down some of them. All right, Revelation chapter 12, we'll run the verse now. We won't be done with this chapter overnight. Revelation 12, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, the serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out in the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. All right, back to Daniel. There it is. The hosts are the angels. He waxed great even to the host of heaven. The Bible says he, he's the third of the angels. And cast down some of the hosts, Revelation 12, and of the stars to the ground. Well, Revelation chapter 1 says, you see the stars? Yeah, what are the stars? They're the angels. Where do you see the stars? You go walking from a Chinese restaurant and you'll see stars and handprints and, for, and, and footprints and you'll be in Los Angeles. The city of the angels. The falling angels. In the Hollywood. I mean Hollywood. The sacred wood. The sacred tree. Oh, tan and bob. Oh, tan and bob. How the Baptist churches have their Christmas tree. And don't tell us of Jeremiah chapter 10. And the Native Americans with their totem pole. Their Yuletime logs. And the Bible speaks of many times in the shadows of the trees, in the high places. And they went out, cut a tree, <coughs> made an idol, and the residue, they baked their cake. So. Scripture was scripture. He magged himself, he magnified himself, he magnified himself, he magnified himself. 
even to the prince of the host, that prince of the host. That's where I am. That prince of the host. Look at 925. We'll get to 9, hopefully. 925. You, you should recognize this verse. If you don't, you need to find a new church. You need to study your Bible. You need to read your Bible. All of it. Daniel 9.25, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince. There it is. That's Jesus Christ. His crucifixion, verse 26. Now I see verse 26, Not for himself, but for the people. Back to Daniel. What's he magnified himself. Jesus Christ did not magnify himself. He gave himself for the people. Even to the prince of the host. What's the host? It's the angels. He was made lower than the angels. Not all angels worship Jesus Christ. They know him. James says something like, again, I'm not quoting verbatim, but you know, even the devils know Jesus and tremble. Or God. But they're the one saying. And as we get more and more the study of, of the Antichrist in the book of Daniel, and who knows when we ever make it to Thessalonians, and whoever we make it back to the book of Revelation, which you're already, you can go through and get. There's only one I am on the earth of the tribulation period, and it's not Jesus Christ. It's God who, of Satan, and it's Satan who proclaims to be God and the I am. The Antichrist is going to say, I'm the Jewish Messiah. I am the Jesus Christ. And by him, the Antichrist, the daily sacrifice was taken away. So in the tribulation period, there is a temple. And they are performing the law, the even in the morning sacrifice, the peace offering, the meat offering, the sin offering, the trespass offering. It's all going on. In three and a half years of the tribulation period, they're going to go up to the temple. They're going to open that middle that middle. Uh, they are, da, 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 da. Here I am, God Jehovah. Play the music, start up the band, and bow down to before me. And the Jews are going to be, oh, wait a minute. Ten Commandments. You better, pl up, you better pray your flight's not on the Sabbath. Because they'll be grounded that time because it's. The law is back. You won't even be able to go to the airport. That's too far. What, what were the things that the Pharisees kept striking against Jesus? You're going too far. You're doing too much on the Sabbath. Pointing to the time of the tribulation period. At the three and a half years, then you're going to have three and a half years of the great tribulation. When the Jews will be marked for hunting, not for the 666. And the place of his sanctuary, the temple, was cast down. Just what happened during Daniel's time. During Daniel's time, that Jerusalem and that temple came down and the sacrificing stopped, making Nebuchadnezzar a type of antichrist. I'm surprised Daniel's not one of the prophets that show up in the tribulation. Moses and Elijah, the law and the prophets show up. And they're killed. Elijah never dies. He will. Moses will die twice. Moses makes it in the promised land. But it's not the promised land when Moses shows up. And like Jesus, they're going to reject Moses and Elijah. And they're Gonna kill, they're going to battle the Antichrist and they're going to die. Then they're going to have Christmas. 
but you don't know what I'm talking about. And a host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression and cast down the truth to the ground. He's going to take the truth and he's going to stump on it. Maybe that truth is the 144,000 out there preaching. Moses and Elijah. And it practiced and prospered. Who's the it? <laughs> well, there's an image built to the Antichrist. It walks and it talks and speaks. It's given life. I heard one saint speak, speaking, and we, we talked about that the other day. That's a Jewish. That's not a Christian. And another saint, say unto the certain saint, which spake. Now where did these two show up? <laughs> he says, I've seen a goat. I've seen a ram. And now here's two saints talking. How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation? Jesus said that's the, that's the abomination of desolation spoken about Daniel the prophet. There it is. That's the point when Jesus said, you better pray, it's not the Sabbath day. To give both the sanctuary, the temple, and the host, the people, the Jews, the Israelites, 144,000, to be trodden underfoot. There's a, there's a place in Revelation about that. He measures the temple. He mentions a portion to the Gentile. Now, now there's going to be a lot of numbers in Daniel. I don't know. But here's the first number. Unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. It's been destroyed. Now, in chapter 12, we're going to get two more numbers, and we're not going to throw them out right now. You're not ready. What is the 2,300 days? I have no idea. I'm not even going to get into it. We're going to stop right there.